Welcome back everyone. If I sound a little different today, it's because I'm just getting over having a cold or the flu or RSV or COVID or the plague, one of those things. So I probably sound a little nasally this week. I hope you're having a great holiday season. One of the things that I love about the holidays is it gives us a chance to reflect back on the year that is just about to pass and maybe come up with some goals for next year. So one of my goals for 2023 is to just spend a little more time working on some things that I haven't worked on before. And this video today is an example of that. So in today's video, I'm going to show you three different setups using only one light. I'm going to be working with our model, Derek. He suggested or requested um, a series of images to update his portfolio. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. One of my goals in using one light in this shoot is to try some things out that I normally wouldn't do with one light. So these are not going to be your regular sort of one light setups. It's always good to sort of strip things down and go back to basics, if you will. And that could be a very good way to start off the new year. So hopefully you'll enjoy following along with me today. And hopefully it will inspire you maybe to try out something like this um, in the next few weeks. So for this first look with Derek, I decided to boom a 27 inch or 70 centimeter white beauty dish out over the set. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a behind the scenes image that is actually our final image. And one thing you want to look for in a setup like this is that the light or the beauty dish in this case is exactly parallel to the ground because if it's off a little bit, it's going to look a little strange in the final photo. So I've got it as level as I can. And then I'm also pitching it back there towards him just a little bit. One of the keys in a composition like this is to see where that sort of hard line from the edge of the reflector or the edge of the beam of light is falling on the background. And I tried moving him forward and back until I felt like I had it in the right place. Now, maybe because of his light hair color, I could have had that line go through his shoulders or somewhere like that, but I ended up having that line sort of go through his head or a little bit above. In fact, I tried out different elevations uh, for my camera during this shoot, and if I went a little higher, that got that line above his hair, and if I went a little lower, that got that line sort of going through his head. Let me know in the comments below which one you think looks the best and we'll sort of decide together. So for this next look, Derek wanted to update the body shots in his portfolio. So we headed over by the window. For this shot, I'm gonna be using the window light as my main light. Whenever you're photographing someone for this purpose and you're trying to show off their physique, you really need to use probably Rembrandt lighting or more split lighting, something more extreme, because that will create some shadowing and possibly some mid-tones and highlights in order to give you more dimensionality to the subject. You're gonna sculpt out their body and show off what they've been working so hard on in the gym or dieting on uh, to achieve. You don't wanna use front lighting because it's probably gonna be too boring and not really gonna show off um, any uh, shadows and show those nice uh, ripples in, in their physique. So that's the reason why I'm using my window light here and I'm trying to create Rembrandt lighting. Now to augment this, I'm going to use my one light. This time I'm gonna use a strip box over here on camera right and I'm placing it back there so that light comes towards the camera and sort of rakes across Derek's body and creates some nice highlights on his abdominal muscles, sort of getting one white skinny light on each side here of the middle of his abdomen. That's the main point. So when I took my very first test shot, the image was blown out of the water. It was way too bright. And I thought about moving the light back in order to have it be dimmer in my shot. And when I got over there, I sort of thought about it a little harder. And I decided that if I moved the light back, that would make the light a harder light. And I didn't really want that. What I really wanted for my lighting in this situation was I wanted to just sort of paint on the highlights on his body, much like you would see from window light. I wanted it to look very nice 
and natural. So in order to do that, I decided to use high speed sync. And what happens when you use high speed sync is it takes that single pulse of light that your flash puts out and then it turns it into a bunch of pulses. And those pulses go off as the sensor is reading and recording your image. And so each pulse sort of lines up with where the shutter is opening and where the sensor is reading. And because we're dividing the flash output into a bunch of pulses, that then makes it overall uh, darker. I'm gonna be able to sort of bleed off some light, if you will, by using high speed sync. By switching over, I was actually able to reduce the transmission of light just enough so I got the exact look that I was going for. And I got just the light output that I was going for. So for our third and final look, we're... Oh, shit. That's gonna be a problem. <laughs> I don't wanna have to fix this right now. Right, I just need this to sit here for 20 minutes. All right, so for our third look, we're gonna head back over to the white background. And this time I'm gonna use an optical snoot on my light. This is gonna be a nice photo, SN29. Now, if you go on Amazon, you can just search for optical snoot and you'll see a lot of options there. You've probably seen a lot of people selling them lately and it looks like every one of them is made in the same factory or maybe a couple of factories and a lot of uh, businesses are just putting their sticker on the side of it and then reselling it. So just know there are a lot of them out there. And the main thing you want to look for when you get an optical snoop is whether or not the lens has any chromatic aberration. Because if the lens is low quality, then you're going to end up with blue and yellow fringing at the edges of your photos. I had that with my first optical snoop and then I had to get a second one. So if yours comes and you have this problem, just return it and try another one and make sure that you get a good one. But the nice photo SN29 um, is definitely a good one. So for this look, I'm gonna be projecting a circle onto the background and I'm gonna put Derek right up there next to the backdrop. And the reason for that is I want sort of some nice dramatic shadows. Now, the nice photo SN29 and many of these snoots sort of eat light for breakfast. And so the problem there is that you're gonna to have to use a lot of time higher ISO in order to capture your image with good depth of field, or you're gonna to need to use shallow depth of field. So for this shot, I'm actually gonna be shooting at about 640 ISO, and I think that'll be just fine. If there is a little bit of noise, it's probably not gonna show because usually noise shows up in those areas of the frame that are nearly black, but not so black for the most part, just when it's visible, let's say. Uh, maybe something like the bottom of my uh, sweatshirt or sweater vest jacket here. Maybe that's where you're going to see noise in my frame right now. However, in this image that I'm going to be shooting of Derek, everything is going to be very high contrast. And I think I'm going to either have black shadows or I'm going to have bright mid-tones and highlights. So I don't expect that there'll be that sort of zone in this frame. In fact, I'm going to have Derek wear all black and white clothing and then I'm going to convert all of these images over to black and white. And the reason is, is that I want to have a really high contrast punchy image. And with him right here next to the backdrop, there's going to be some very nice sharp shadows. And that's really what I was looking for uh, with this particular composition. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, just leave those below. And if you'd like to learn some more One Light setups, I have a One Light lighting handbook. And this week, the last week of the year, it's on sale for 50% off. And in this handbook, I outline how to do 23 different One Light setups. And the digital download is only $25. So to find out more information and to get your copy today, just go to johngress.com slash lighting handbooks. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Oh, and Happy New Year. All right, now I guess you know why if you're an eagle eye person and you notice they are between looks two and three, the bottom of that backdrop kind of changed a little bit.